Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 124 of the Eve's Drop podcast. We have an exceptionally legendary, uh, cool, best beard in the business, award-winning caster. I'll take it. Mr. Miles the Ross from London, but yeah. Australian? It's complicated. We can hit that one right off the rip. I want to clear that up. Yeah, because clear there's it, a lot of, There's confused. a lot of misinformation out there. I am confused. Born in London. Okay. So a man and a woman. Oh. Back in the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Born and bred in the UK. Um, moved to Australia, like, I want to say 2010, something like that, 2011. Why? Met a lady in the UK. Oh, okay. She so won you, had, my you, heart. you had grown up. Yeah, you were, yeah. Okay. So it yeah, wasn't yeah. like immediately. No, no, no. I was like 20, so you, I was 20 something. Yeah. Oh, so you did grow up, yeah, yeah, like yeah. fully grow up in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. It's Paul and she pulled me out. There was no, you know, I met her at university. She was on exchange and I fell in love, head over heels, yeah. no questions. And she was like, I've got to go back. And I was like, well, I've got no plans. So you want to take me with you? And that was it. Packed up everything. I mean, everything. Stop gaming, no console, no nothing. It was like a suitcase, my guitar and a backpack. What did you tell your family? I'm in love. And they said, and they were like, it. some of them were like, are you sure? Yeah. Do you know this? You've been dating for two months. Are yeah. you sure? Yeah. And I was like, nah, yeah. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna work out. And that was like eleven years ago. So we're still going strong. When when Hutch told me that he was dating Esmeralda or Esme, I told him, I'm like, I don't think it's gonna last, dude. Just because that's the, the relationship that we had. Yeah. But here they are. They're still still going Man, strong. Finds a way. Love finds a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's it was a big leap, leap though. Like from the UK, I grew up in the countryside to going to like a big city like Sydney was crazy at a boy there illy fucking beast <laughs> um illy he's just a walked into he's a grinder, walked into way. walked into the building ready to go yeah fresh shave dude I, one thing about illy he is like he has one of those work ethics and like you can test this way more than i can but like for the fans who don't know mm -hmm. like kickoff classic everyone's out partying like last he was like the last guy to leave the venue mm -hmm. i was going through picking up my bag and i see him in the optic training room yeah and he's sitting there shooting bots yeah in complete silence just grinding and yeah. i was like He's, he's going places. He's going places. Hundred yeah. percent. He's got a long and beautiful career ahead of him. Yeah, we're talking about you. Yeah, look, the, the <laughs> thing is, is like he's he's so shy that talking in front of him is like the best thing that I can do because it, you know, <laughs> it, it 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 makes him shy, it makes him blush. Uh, but yeah, su super happy with uh with with yeah, having bro. him on the team. He's a great example uh, for others to follow on the team, yeah, which man. is super good. Like yeah, we obviously some vet in in Scump, and everybody can learn a bunch from Seth, but. Like that sort of mentality, that sort of uh, um, discipline is always welcomed. He's he's a, he's a weapon. Hey, look, enough about him. Let's let's talk about you, man. So, let, uh, who who are you today? Let's start today, <clears throat> man. That's a good question. Today, Thank you. I came up with it. husband first, then international man of mystery. Oh, yep. Got to roll with that. Two yep. passports now, man. I, this is I, then this is going back to the Australian thing. I'm a citizen of the UK. I'm also a citizen of Australia now. I got my green card in the US. Like, I'm just building this catalog. I've got, like, foreign currencies, multiple passports. If yeah. someone broke into my house, they'd be like, oh, Who shit. The fuck? Is this he's a spy? spy. I'm in trouble. Oh, he's from London. Yeah, he's yeah. 007. <laughs> double O, shit, I'm in trouble. Hey, so, uh, growing up in London, I know, I've never asked an Englishman this, yeah. right? Being 6% English myself, like, you know, I should know this. Yeah. But the 007 stuff... Like that's an actual. That's like that's like. I don't true. Know. Is it true shit? I really want it to be true. I've read M the books. M M MI six is a thing. Yeah, though. yeah, that is one hundred percent a thing. Yeah. That building that gets blown up in Skyfall, you can see that thing for real. Yeah, the MI six. I've seen it. Yeah, I've it seen is a, a cool looking thing. Yeah, I don't know if the whole double O system is real, but hex for the sake of this podcast and it for is. all the fans out there, one hundred percent. 100% it 100 is. 100 percent real. Like, how many times do you think you've walked past James Bond, like, yeah. growing up? Or at least a double O. Like any of the, any like, double O's. There's a lot of numbers out there. Double O, you got to, what, 10 or yeah. 9? And then yeah, it's yeah. like, you don't want to be zero one zero. That's not as cool. I can't believe they gave his number away when, uh, when in, in the movie. Like, I, I, like, shouldn't they have retired his fucking jersey? Yeah, it's right. It's the least they can do. He was an, he's an OG. He had a long tenure, and he was a legend. Also, he went around introducing himself... So like the worst spy in history, right? Yeah. Like everywhere he goes, he's like, yeah, it's Bond, James Bond. Yeah. I'm like, you're not very low key about this. Nah. You know, the car's flashy, the suits are good. You're yeah. always wearing expensive sunglasses. And now you're rocking up with your name. And yeah. one of the bad guys know you are all the time. Yeah. He is a troll. He, he's, the, he's the guy that picks up the most wanted 
in in Warzone. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I am, and he's just like casually strolling down downtown, rest in peace, of a dance. But like he's he's that guy for sure. Yeah. Okay, so but international is, man of mystery. So I, I'm an I'm an international man of mystery in that we lived. Uh, so I've I lived in the UK, lived in Australia, uh, lived in the US as a kid as well. Actually, that's something I'm not most folks don't know. My dad had a job with DreamWorks back in the early 2000s late 90s yeah we lived in santa monica for like three years i went to school um i made friends how old how old i was like i was like nine to ten ish years old i have memories of it right yeah and that was a really cool time and it was we, we got to we got to have some fun experiences there we had a nice house in santa monica and you know like I remember going to the beach having a good time the coolest stuff though was like he came out with a british comedian called lee evans who um is retired now but for the british fans like he's a he's a really big dude. Yeah. like stadium sellout he's he's huge um, they came out with him trying to like break America. He wanted to like get his Hollywood career going, and that was really fun because you know we were on the set of like the Fifth Element. He had a really small role in that, so those films are cool enough. But like when you're on set and you see Bruce walking around, like these those little yeah. moments were great. Who doesn't like the, the Fifth Element? Who doesn't like the Fifth Element? I've never met a single person in yeah, my the, entire life. The opera scene. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, love it. The stones are in me, dude. That yeah. film is ten out of ten. So good. If you, guys have, if you guys haven't watched. The Fifth Element, you're missing out, and yeah, it's gonna be a little bit outdated, I think. Mm, have, a little bit. It, have you watched it recently? Yeah, I watch it like at least once a year, man. Do it you? is it is a little dated, but it is still it still like captures everything that's cool about sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And Luc Besson, the director, before he went, I don't know, a little downhill IMO, it's still one of his best. I yeah. love that film. True. You you're a big film guy. Love my films, man. So do I. Love my films. So do yeah. I. I'm I'm known as the movie guy. Yeah. Anybody, anyone has a question? I'm the other guy. Yeah, is it good? Trusty Batman? You should. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think about that? I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it. But yeah. What do you, how do you think Pattinson's going to do as a Batman? Well, I think when I first saw it, it was Pattinson coming in. I was like, right off the rip. Yeah, Twilight, whatever. He's still a good actor, though. Like, look yeah. at anything else he's been in, he's good. Yeah. He has the face for it. You put him in that mask, and that man's got a good jaw. He's if got a anything, good job. he's going to look good. Do you um, have a good jaw? We can't see under there. Nah, you, you'd never know. You we'll will never, never know how this jaw goes. <laughs> That might be why I have a beard because I've got like no chin. There's yeah, just nothing yeah. here, but yeah. like just hair. It's just <laughs> just molded molded hair to make it seem as though you have that that butt that that strong butt chin. Oh yeah, man. Me and Bond with the butt chin. With chins, a little you know. with that little uh, dimple in it. <laughs> so how, how where does your story begin uh, to to get to where you're at today? Okay, so it all begins. It's in the countryside in the UK. The internet's bad. There's not a lot what's to the, do. Was it a city? Or? Uh, it was. A, I lived in a really small town called Cold Wolfham. Uh, cold, 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 Waltham, C O L D W A L T H A M. Waltham, tiny. Yeah. Right. My house was built that we lived in was built in 1220. We're talking ancient, right? It's called the Old Priest House. You can Google it now. You can check it out. The pictures are up there. Um, family ran it as a restaurant for a while. I was gaming. There wasn't a lot to do. Didn't have a car. No bus for a while. I was indoors playing games, watching movies, listening to music. That was my deal. Mm -hmm. Played Halo for a long time found my itch knew this was my thing sports didn't cut it music and nah, i wasn't really into it yet gaming though was the thing it you know it sucked us all in yeah you know, of course like. played halo for a while um had my chips got a couple of chips that was good kept my parents off my back because this was back in the day man this was like when you say you got a couple of chips like what are we talking we about? won we won uh xl three or four what was your gamer tag my gamer tag back in the day it was heaven's wrath oh it wasn't just wrath like, it was heaven's it was wrath heaven's wrath i was yeah. obsessed with um you ever play that game on the playstation tenchu stealth assassins no you're like a ninja it was, so, it was sick as hell yeah all right so that game it was the the last edition of that game was called heaven's punishment and i remember when i first got online my first tag was heaven's punishment i was like this is a badass name yeah people are gonna see this and go oh that guy's mean yeah hell. yeah, yeah, was yeah. A nerd. but when i had the tag that was it and i it wasn't until i got like we signed up with dignitas like way back in the day mm. first like console team they had us yeah, shout out od shout out od still around we were alongside some um, some COD legends as well, um, like old, old school UK COD legends, and they basically pulled us in. We ran with them for a while. We had a good time with it, and that was it, man. That was the introduction to pro gaming. Again, uh, how, what years were these again? This would have been like Halo three times, like two thousand seven, eight, nine. Holy shit! So early, early, early. yeah. It was yeah. like Justin TV still, man. We were yeah. on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. very, very little evidence of me ever playing comp games. Yeah. ever. So you could be you fucking. Just got to take my word for it, right? Yeah, man of mystery. Yeah, man of mystery, right? Got to keep it. Got to keep it a little bit. Is it real? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Ask him. He's already said it. But yeah, that was it, man. And it, you know what it's like? It just it it captured my imagination. It captured my passion. It took it took like you know this little countryside life and it exposed me to the bigger world in an amazing way because mm -hmm. like i grew up in london it was it was cool being there for a while you know multicultural city a lot going on hit gaming though traveled the world i was mm. in japan for uh, i competed in the 
Metal Gear Online World Championship. All expenses paid trip to Tokyo. It was, I was like, so like, this is, let me, let me backpedal a tiny bit. Playing Halo in the UK wasn't the coolest thing in the world. Money wasn't good. No prestige, no girls, nothing, right? Yeah. I leave my, I'm, I'm lying to all my friends at school, what I'm doing, I'm playing games day and night, whatever. I go to university, all of a sudden, I'm going to Italy, I'm going to Rome to play a tournament, I'm going to Japan, play a tournament, I've got to go to Germany, I've got to compete Jesus. in the world cyber games. Yeah. I look like this cool dude. And all my, all my new friends are like, this is amazing, why don't you, you talk about this more, celebrate it? And I'm like, because it's not cool, yeah. it's just this thing I love. Now it's different, man. Yeah. Now it's like, look at it, like where we are now, man. Like what you guys are doing with what, like everyone, like what Ninja's done with it. Gaming has transformed so much in the last yeah, shout out 10 Ninja. years, man. Like so many people have changed. Yeah, he pushed, he definitely pushed the space forward and you know, uh, like he didn't ask for it. Like he worked hard and you know, the gods blessed him with, yeah. with that opportunity. And he transcended, you know, esports and gaming and everything. And it just pushed the space forward. So That's insane, man. super, super crazy. I mean, you know, Fortnite has a lot to do with it. Also new game yeah. that was something that broke through all the barriers right like grandma's knew what fortnite was and um it was but you're right like back in the day it was it was very difficult to explain to people like what it is that you're doing yeah so. it was it was counterculture without like it wasn't, it wasn't cool enough you couldn't sell it like when the ufc first broke it was like this cool underground thing gaming it wasn't cool yeah you know punk rock like any any we brought our own shit to the yeah. you know we brought our own pcs we brought our own chairs we brought everything tvs i remember carrying crt televisions across the united kingdom yeah just to go to a land breaking my back on trains people looking at me weird like yeah. what are you doing with tv man you just kicked out your house like, now nah, i'm playing halo yeah what the fuck i'm a pro gamer so you should have had a shirt that said i am a pro gamer those are the days man um so your path how did how did you get to where you're so, at? obviously you so, competed i so competed put it down Picked up commentary straight away. Always been a little outspoken. Always enjoyed. Which um, game did you start? What was the first game that you commentated? First game I commentated Halo Three. That okay. Was it. Yeah. I mean, I remember getting like knocked out the last tournament. I got like fourth place, whatever. I was like salty as hell. Picked up the freehand mic, started chatting shit. That was it. And mm -hmm. that was that was literally how it began. And then from there, um, EGL at the time, Shao Glenn Elliot. He was. He said, "Yo, come back. We're gonna Loughborough. I'll get you room, get you accommodation, take care of whatever." And that was it. I took a huge break though. You know, it wasn't pro, it was just us having fun. Again, mm -hmm. it was that punk mm -hmm. rock vibe. I took a big break when I moved to Australia, picked up um, brand new, like, profession, everything. Stopped. What no part What part of Australia? Sydney. Sydney? Sydney was the shit, man. Sydney is one of the greatest places on earth. Is that the one that has the cool building? Yeah, the, the opera house. Yeah, the right, opera house. It looks a bit like Goku's hair. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I've said it, you'll never unsee it. Never, ever. never been, been to Melbourne. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, loved it. I, I, we went outside once, but it was enough for me to be like, yo, this place is fucking That was the crown. Dope. That was the crown event, right? Yeah. That was like a week before I got in a card, mm. which is crazy. Yeah. So you could have been casting that. I could have been casting that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it was good. It was an awesome experience. Loved it. I, I hope to one day come back to Australia like Hell as yeah, soon as possible. I mean, I just want to go everywhere. Everywhere that there's a member of the Green Wall, I want to visit and I want to shake their hands. You well, maybe... You know, but now fist bump. But now fist bump, sure. I, I've, I've even gotten to the point where it's like, what's up? You know, like, I yeah. see you. Yeah, we shook. Air, yeah, air yeah. high five. A -C -A -C. Um, so what what, uh, what made you, what allowed you to do, not allowed you, but what, what gave you the, the, the confidence to say, you know what, Call of Duty. Did you also play Call of Duty? Yeah, I played Call I played first COD, COD 2. The... It okay. was a good one, man. It was a, it was a, it was a great. COD 4 was the one that changed everything for me. I thought that was, I was like, this is a dope game. But wait, I'll circle back because this like when I dropped out of gaming because I did you you know it's I mean not uh, you don't know what it's like but for a lot of people when you leave esports there's no door there's no ladder you don't get back in I 100% disconnected like when I moved to Australia I packed everything up I didn't play games and what I did nothing and then one day I got a phone call from the same guy that got me my casting jobs and he was like yo I've got MCC it's coming out you're my fave can you bring a suit to the UK yeah and I was like what like surely there are more commentators out there who are doing this better than I am now I'm out of the game for like years and years at this point he brings me back I'm sitting next to strong side casting Halo 2 like the the remaster or the anniversary mm -hmm, edition mm -hmm. mind is blown mind is blown and I'm like wow this is really cool let's do this meet a couple of people ESL Australia starts calling me the phone does not stop ringing for years and years until eventually um, the guys at CDL or the CWL back in the day were like come on over mm -hmm. I remember being in um, I was in it was in Hollywood for the first Halo World Championship again like a dream come true I'm alongside Walshy you know just like Golden Boys there maybe not much of a dream come true meeting Golden Boy but like you know this is like I'm living out the gaming yeah. fantasy for sure and then um, at, the, at that very event like the people from Activision sunk the hooks in they were like yeah we found you come to COD and I was like I don't know 
I don't know nothing about the game. I don't know any of the players, none of the history, none of that. I don't know anything about Optic, n nothing. I don't know. The, any, I don't have a PlayStation. But yeah, hard and to they believe. Said, they said, shut up, get on board, and that's it. Hard to believe that you don't know anything about I Optic. No, <laughs> I'm sure you didn't. Uh, you've heard of the name. You've seen it. It was fucking everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, period. No. Uh, but the history is obviously the the coolest. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, go back in it, uh, all documented, right? To, True. To like, no, check, fact check me, goddamn it, right? <laughs> like, please, it's it's there. Um, all right, so that's it. So that's it. That's how. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and this is all from still Australia. Like, I'm not moved out yet, but that was that was crazy. And again, the the, the wildest thing for me, seeing the history, seeing the passion of the fans, seeing the game, players, everything. I was like, I'm not gonna fit in here. I'm not. I don't know. I know. Well, what made shit. you say that? I was like, I don't know anything about the game. And the biggest thing for me with esports is like, you have to be authentic. If you're inauthentic, the fans sniff you out immediately, so quick, dude. And they, they're like that, who the fuck, get this guy out of here, man. So I remember coming to my first show and I was like, I don't know a thing. I don't know the name of the weapons. Yeah. I've had a PlayStation for six <clears throat> hours and I'm on the broadcast now, but I can promise you, I'm gonna bring the energy, I'm gonna have some fun and we're gonna get through this. And that was it. Good. You know, that was all I could do. Well, we're happy to have you, man. Thank like, you, you, you it's, it's It's really, really refreshing to see your level of of, uh, of skill in casting. Thank you. Man. The voice is good too. You Helps. know what I'm saying? Helps. The look, all you know, there, <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, and you're good people too. You wouldn't be sitting where you're at if I. You know That's, what I mean? I can tell. So yeah, look. I, you know how that song says, "No new friends." I just. I love that shit. You know what I mean? Like we, it's just so many more people to take care of, right? Like yeah, the, the the bigger this thing gets, uh, and maybe that doesn't necessarily apply for people who are in it, but in my circle, like I just see it as like one more person to look after. Like God damn it! And I don't care how old you are, I'm gonna have your back regardless. So um, glad glad to have you. Um, obviously, for the for the last couple of years, you've seen the 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 trajectory that Call of Duty has gone in from a professional level. We started out very humbly doing it on our own with the help of MLG TV and the help of, you know, the Sundances, the Sepsos, the Adam Apicellas. Uh, I mean, none of this, I mean, Adam Apicellas is obviously like the, 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 the bones of, yeah. uh, the backbone of all of that work, yeah. right? Because that's, that's, um, that's the thing that actually had physical, you know, I mean, not, not saying that Sepso and Sundance never carried a TV, but I can tell you that they never carried more TVs than, you know, the, the Ohio boys, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So, you know, phone calls and, and getting the business done, respect to that, obviously, that, that, that takes skill. But what Adam was able to do was, like, obviously the difference. Not only that, but he's, like, excellent at, at like, scouting talent. Um, but you've seen it. You've seen it from, from, the, from the roots yeah. to, obviously, a 25 to 20 whatever million dollar franchise fee yeah. to get in. Um, What's what's that been like to you? For, I mean, it's got to be better for you guys, right? Because it's it 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 sort of becomes a little bit more uh, of a commitment from Activision to be like, you guys are our guys, and this is what yeah. we got to go through. Uh, unfortunately, this year, you know, Maven and Merck didn't didn't come back. I, I think uh, you know, very very missed. But luckily, we we have a good talent pool of, of casters that, that can carry that carry yeah. that weight. So, um, how, what's been the experience for you now that we are in a franchise league? It's been. It's a little different, man. It's not in a not in a major way because, like, ultimately, I still rock up to events, cast it, have fun, go home, whatever that looks like. I think for me, it's the idea that this thing is going to be around now for a long time, mm -hmm. or at least like you know that's the plan. That is, you know, plan. it's not going to nothing's going to happen. Not overnight. if I can help it. Not if we <laughs> exactly. But I think I think what we're trying to do, what I've always tried to do with the COD League is like, you know, I'm trying to turn. We're trying to make this thing as mainstream as possible. Mm -hmm. We're trying to end, like Call of Duty is in everyone's homes in some regard, right? But we want to put it in the same vein as like the NFL, NBA, you know, worldwide sports. Bigger than that, easy. Bigger than that, because it's it's more accessible in a lot of ways, I think. You know, I mean, maybe not as like football, you can kick a ball around wherever. That's how, you know, it starts, but, or soccer, sorry. But I, I do want us to get there. I want to reach a point where we have like a cultural shift and we really do, you know, people go, I respect Scump for his abilities and his talents in game as yeah. much as I respect Ronaldo or, you know, like in that regard, yeah. that's what I want for us. I, I mean, I think I think we're we're on the right path. I think we've got a good start going for us. Obviously, yeah. I, I think uh, like all the moves that we've done, the commitment that we ourselves have put towards this project is paying off. Not necessarily just from a monetary standpoint, but definitely from a cultural standpoint. Yeah. 
Uh, and you see it more and more. Uh, we had uh, Kyler Murray here last week, who's uh, in phase. You know, I could have said this is uh, Kyler Murray from the Cardinals, right? The quarterback of the Cardinals, yeah. like mega big deal. I uh, I posted a story that said this is Face Clan's Kyler see, Murray. That, but that is amazing, dude. Yeah, like and and that because it still rings true. And someone be like, well, he may be this, but he's definitely <clears> also <throat> from Face Clan. Yeah, like you've seen Snoop wearing like the Face Chain yeah. on the yeah, Super yeah. Bowl halftime show. We're like well, this is happening. Yeah, yeah, no, it's and again, you know, it's it's all about culture. It's all about shifting, and, and more importantly, like the the, the people that are not the, the the people that are from non traditional esports backgrounds, mm. uh, people that just play video games, like see the movement and understand the movement so much that they cannot stop or cannot stop themselves from wanting to be involved in yeah. it, no matter the level. Yeah, right. Like uh, we've had f uh, five. Cowboys in here. We've had basketball players in here from the NBA. We've had stars like come and go, and they're all about the future yeah. of this thing. So when you see confidence from people who aren't in the space, and when you see experts like you and I, and experts like Matt who sits behind the camera, when you see experts believing in this thing mm. so much so that we were willing to do it for free for so long. So long. That, the way. <laughs> that that you know it, it, it yeah. becomes a thing it's inevitable that this thing becomes big and more importantly it is inevitable that at one point this will be bigger than traditional sports my kid my beautiful daughter you know 12 years old loves to play basketball loves to play volleyball she plays tennis she's she, you know she dances uh so we she, we have her in all these classes but the majority of her time is spent on her switch whether it's playing pokemon whether it's playing zelda whether it's playing um whatever like that's where mm. she lives and mm. if you ask everybody today what they like all the kids what do they want to be what's the number one thing that the kids want to be nowadays it's probably a youtuber yeah influencer close enough he's an influencer yeah, yeah influencer yeah. so for me it's uh it's it's a good indicator that society is shifting to yeah. what it looked the the world always will always belong to the youth the youth will determine what their world is going to be every step of the way and i think that we're in that sort of uh it, we, we're in that shift right now from going from web 2.0 to web 3 with and like it, kids understand that kids understand the value mo, the value more on them finding a pikachu in their mobile game yeah. than actually having a pikachu card yeah. like my daughter i, I told her, I'm like, daughter, I'm like daughter, you want to collect like pokemon cards you want to like no. explore she's like, i'm good that's nah. done we've done that yeah. yeah i'm good that's for that's for y'all she didn't say it but i'm like she's like i, I see that <laughs> You know, like I see, I see that, and look, I, I, I do a very good job of, of, uh, of, of asking young people like what they're into, what they're doing, because they are the future, yeah. and they are the ones that are gonna say, "This is where my eyeballs are going to be." And, uh, and I think that we need to do some heavy lifting on the Call of Duty side to, because it's a mature game. It is, but people who are younger than that, with the parents' permission, can buy the game and play it and, 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 and do it. Uh, I think that uh, one of the, I think Ghosts had the paintballs. Do you oh, remember the paintball that? Mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The paintball mode. Yeah. I think that that should be applicable on every single Call of Duty that gets yeah. released, so the younger audiences can play it on that, and to have like a parental control that allows them to turn it into blood if I, they want to. I know that that has been a problem for as long as I can remember. Yeah. In fact, it's a violent game. Same with Counter Strike. You yeah. Know, you know, I feel like we get away with, with like Halo now because it's all you know robots and aliens you get away with it but like call of duty is that like realism aspect does turn people off and yeah. I'm, I'm with you there i think it's i think it's difficult to manage and it turns parents off like it won't turn yeah. it won't, won't turn me off like i know um, that video games don't make people violent right like i'm i, I know that's that one of my favorite arguments to have yeah right i know that that it doesn't <laughs> yeah. so like the blood shouldn't make a thing but if it yeah. makes it easier for parents to be okay with their sons and daughters playing uh call of duty yep. on a paintball mode i think that that that's like a lot i mean it turns businesses off as well like folks don't want to get involved tv doesn't want to get involved because like we're showing you know that they, i remember count strike they're like we can't show this on tv because the word you know terrorist yeah, -terror. like, yeah. these words are in you know that's not something they want to promote and all that it's hard man but i hope that the, the the upper head the upper most echelon of the cod world can see that and you know i'm well, not, I'm not see saying exactly like we want to you want to stay true to your core audience you want to create a, an authentic and awesome yeah. product but you want to be able to branch out and attract more eyes that maybe we're not as yeah they they have departments they have dedicated departments to the, dedicated to that yeah. dedicated to advertising to kids i'm talking I'm not, shit talking shit here right like, yeah, yeah but they do think about it like they have to they have to like if it's, we're thinking about it they definitely thinking about it yeah look they they look at the nfl 
and they see like the audience that attends that mm. and where they're spending the majority of their time are they said on the field no yeah, it's right I, here yeah. or on the teleprompter right yeah. like it's like kids don't kids don't interact the way that they used to and little by little all the old heads that grew up in this era mm. are gonna continue to not be able to go to games right they're too tired they're too old they yeah. don't want too many people covid blah 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 right so they have to make the adjustments necessary in order to do that mm -hmm. so from an advertiser's perspective you look at his thing and then you're like, all right, well, where do we want to be, right? Like, where do we want to be? Do we want to be uh, with the, the with a football team that can guarantee us X amount of viewership and sales and this, that, or the other? But, and how much commitment do we want to do to the future of this audience and what this audience yeah. is going to be? Where are they, right? I read once, which is why I, I think I've done a very good job with Optic. I read once that uh, brand loyalty happens when you're eight years old. That's the most impressionable age. Wow. Psychology, uh, psych psycho psychiatrists, psychologists, psychology people. What are they called? Psychiatrists. Psychologists. Yeah. Like they, 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 there was a <clears throat> test that said that eight years old is when you're like. So whatever wow. cereal you like, then is the cereal that you're gonna like for the rest of your life. What's your favorite cereal? Favorite cereal is probably it's the UK one, Cocoa Pops. Cocoa, is, like, is Cocoa like Pops, a, you, Cocoa Puffs? Pops in the UK. Cocoa Pops in the UK. Yeah, Cocoa Pops. That's, uh, Matt's bringing it up. I want to bring I wanna, it up. I want to see what it looks like. Oh, 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 even looking at it now, I'm like, oh, that's the shit right Yeah, it's, there, it's Kellogg's. Oh, is it Kellogg's? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, Kellogg's. yeah. There might be a uh, US equivalent. Yeah, click on that. I want to see the character, Matt. Uh, ah, cool. Are yeah, we, we have Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Yeah, we have, uh, we have Cocoa Puffs, uh, which is obviously like different. And uh, and it's that dude. I I got that dude up there somewhere. Oh, actually, that's the guy that I'm missing. But I can see that at eight years old. That is, it's hooked me. The taste. Yeah. The experience. Yeah. The and then that's, that's when you become you a fan. Brand loyalty. Yeah. Apple Jacks. First time I tried Apple Jacks, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is it for me. I've tried Cheerios. Old, you're like, I've, I've peaked. <laughs> yeah. I had Cheerios, Fruit Loops, yeah. um, uh, Frosted Flakes, yeah. uh, regular, uh, whatever. Uh, okay. Now, new research suggests. The, the kids recognize brands by one and a half to two years of age, and that brand allegiance follows soon after. Think three or four brands on the top of your head, and that is the brand recognition. That's a fact. That's huge. Though. Yeah. So if you can get kids in front of Optic at a young age, yeah, listen, I think about it the on the daily, right? Like there you we, go. There you go. It's and 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 we can, but I think that 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 brand loyalty comes from the green wall showing their kids who their favorite team is. I love. You that. know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, like um. I don't think that my, my dad, uh, I don't even know what my dad's favorite team is, to be honest. I think it's the America from uh, the soccer team. Dude, that's, a, that's a really interesting point about like, in esports, we don't have as much team loyalty. We yep. mostly have player loyalty. Yep. It's nothing like, I think of like the UK soccer, you know, the football world. You're born into a family that supports Arsenal. If you don't support Arsenal, you're, you know, ostracized, you're, you're forced to live outdoors. You yeah. know, the family kick you out and that's yeah. it. In esports, it's like people will follow individual players. I have a friend who, you know, he's he's a he's from New Hampshire, but he lives in Australia. Yeah, he's a Priester fan. He's not a Rocker fan, mm -hmm. and he follows Priester wherever he goes. Yeah, and I think that's something that we don't do as well. I think in esports, no, the, you're the only team I think that can do it. I think I think maybe phase. I think I think yes, everything that you said is facts, mm. but for the beginning part of this thing whatever this thing becomes that's the way that it is eventually the teams will become like when, when when scump in three to four years retires as an optic member yeah right i knock on wood but, um <laughs> it, it, and he retires as an optic member yeah. like that is going to follow if he doesn't go to another team which he won't like that will follow him throughout so yeah. even you know that that sort of thing it is when they flip and move and and, and move around yeah, that's, that's when that brand loyalty sort of becomes a little bit fractured right we saw it when when the sale of optic happened right like like people chose a side people chose humans or chose a logo that they believed in yep. and obviously they followed the soul of of yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah. Of, of, of the brand uh, a lot of people did stay behind though right a lot of people said you know what i'm an optic and i respect those people yeah. my brother being one of them right like they uh, i respect that but i also believe that that friend loyalty and affinity and 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 um and sort of passion for the brand and the logo mm. happens but it doesn't happen right now because we're still building this thing still and, building, for, yeah. and, and for the next decade or two we're still going to be building this thing matt how long has the nfl been around for um and, and, hundreds of years hundred years yeah hundred Somewhere years like, minimum right like, like, yeah it's it's um it's it, a long time to like, really get that into a, a culture yeah exactly so 1920 1920 hey, we're not far off 
uh, how many years is that? My math is, is my math computer in my head is was broken. Yeah. Huh? 102. 102 years. At time of recording. At the time years. of recording, yeah. 102 years old, and it took 100 and how old are the Cowboys? What, what I'm saying is that everything that we're that we're mm. that we're de developing now matters, but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme yep. of things. And it is something that I tell players like all the time. While you are here, you better grab all of the money that's available for you to grab because the three million dollar contract, the 1960. So the the three million dollar contract, the uh, the four million dollar, five million dollar contract, the three million dollar sponsorship on top of your contract, that will come. Yeah. But unfortunately, it will not come for you because you're building this thing. We're building yeah. this thing for other people to benefit from. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have been building this thing for so long. For now. so long. Our entire lives. Yeah. Man. But if you think about it, have we been doing it for 100 years? I don't know. No, we're, we're in year. Right. We're, like, I think that this is the first. Hey, we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. I think that yeah. this is the first decade that we've yeah. been able to do it. And, and, you know, granted, the NFL didn't have uh, the internet, which is easily accessible by everyone to be able to grow as rapidly as we have. But that gives us opportunity. That gives us mm. the ability to truly make this thing our own. So. Are we going to be bigger and quicker than the Cowboys? 1,000%. Yeah, I see. 1,000%. I don't see Optic not being more valuable than the Cowboys. It, it just doesn't make sense that it yeah. wouldn't be. right? More eyeballs. Yep. I mean, as soon as the, every, as soon as soon all the old ad execs pass away or move on. And I don't want to say pass away, but it's and die. But pass on to you know to, to their retirement life and the, the hungry, young ad execs that understand the fucking internet. Are, it's, we are addicts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So, bright. Yeah, the future is mega bright. Like yeah, think man. think about the, the the sponsorships that we're getting right now. They are they are a fraction of what they're going to be yeah. in a very long time. Yeah. Just period. Um so I'm excited for that. Like I know I know that Optics going to be a, a, around for longer than I am and I like that. That's an amazing thing to say out loud and I believe I 100% believe that. Yeah. Exactly. I mean there's sure. in, in, no no shot that it doesn't. Right? Yeah. Like it that I, I as long as I'm alive, I'm gonna be working there on this go. thing. There you go. So, it'll be around. It, it is going to be. And I'm a competitive person, man. You think you think that I help build this thing to not take advantage of the future that oh, comes come with? Oh come on! We're gonna do any of this for fun. Yeah, it yeah. may be. Fun. Don't call us heroes. We do get paid for this. <laughs> like people say like, "Oh, you must love your job." Yeah, yeah, I do. But like, I'm here to win. You know, like that's the competitive nature of the industry that yeah. got us in this, the games. That's yeah. it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I was talking to somebody about this recently. We're like. They were like, oh, you know, you're a team, aren't you? So, yeah, we're a team, but at the same time, like we're all competing each, at each other mm -hmm. at all times, yeah. at every moment. Look at that. The Players Association finally won recognition in 1970. This is the Football Players Association? No, the Football Players Association finally won recognition in 1970, and the owners agreed to a 9000 minimum salary for rookies and $10,000 minimum salary for veterans. We're already beating that. Yep. Right? We're already beating that. Right, this is today. The average salary of an NFL player is two point eight million dollars a year. Son the of the the max the maximum is forty five million, and the minimum value uh, of a of a player is six hundred ten thousand dollars per year. Uh, I have seen but value of a player be higher than that though. Yeah, already. Yeah, think about how, how much did it cost to buy out that that one. Um, Dignitas bought out some some League of Legends player for like a mil, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. What 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 I'm saying is, we we're are there. We, yeah, we're, we're there. Yeah, we're there. We've got a long way to go overall. Hundred percent. But is is it, it going to take a hundred years to be what what this thing's no. going to be? I don't think so. We have technology. Yeah, we yeah. we are cheating. We have literal cheat codes, <laughs> right? That allow you to move faster, quicker, and have information easily ready and and available. Yeah, right. And we also have the advantage. Um, so perks buyout with uh, G two oh. shy of five million according to sources. I don't think that that was the case. I think Carlos cleared it up or something. But whatever, even it's then, millions. Even the, just the, that figure alone. Yeah. Like even even in the ballpark. Thing, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. insane. Look, if if uh, if somebody came in and asked, you know, me for Seth. Uh, first, you, yeah. First, I I check with him. Seth's obviously gonna say no because yeah, you yeah. know this is he loves it here. And you can ask him, right? Like that, yeah, I'm not yeah. putting word in his mouth. He's a free free dude. He. But, but what would you? What would you? You know. What to, no, I wouldn't. You know? you, let's say you theoretically had not had to, but like ballpark, it'd be big, way big, way yeah. big, way bigger big. than bigger than Look, per, five. Yeah, per, Perks is definitely like a a, a player, you know, yeah, a, a fucking a legend, yeah, yeah, fucking valuable. But but there's something to be said, you know, about about. And I have emotion attached to it too, so I don't know. 
You, you can't put I mean? a price I on that. Can't put a price on scum, man. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, but I would get. I'm, I'm with you, but I think that's a perfect little barn on that. It's like we are growing faster, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, sign of the times. We're gonna get there. Yeah, that's I the mean, goal. And, that's the mission. And and like again, we have an advantage because traditional sports have already laid down the the strategy as to how to get to that. If we just apply common sense, and 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 not allow old. Yeah old uh traditional sports people to come in and run it the traditional sports it's without not the, the same man yeah it's not the same, it's not the same. there has to be there, there has to be let's follow the blueprint sure yeah. but let's apply some technology to it right let's Please. apply some common sense to it for there's the time so, being. there's so many cool conversations we're having about like ideas and stuff like what can we do to capture attention because like everyone's attention is what we're trying to steal yeah. at all times and, yeah. and, and like even now yeah so i again the future is very bright which is I'm why keeping the secrets to myself which is why podcasting is like such an anomaly in the space in a space in which six seconds is uh, what i would like to get and in, from information yeah. uh standpoint to sit around and listen to people talk for hours on end like that's the anomaly and that, that that's what i like documentaries like think about that right like it's it's there's, it's there's sometimes action but it's like it's real life right yeah, yeah. and and who would have thought that people would have cared about people watching people and i and i stories man that's what it's just yeah. all stories the stories we the, love the stories the stories but i also think that you know the reason that the people follow uh, internet personalities closely is because they can't watch the same movie over and over and over again, right? Like, but if there was movies readily available twenty four seven, I mean, now there is. Yep. Uh, but for a specific person, like you would fill that out, right? Like we have, we have uh, what maybe an hour of footage, not including streams. Mm. Call it an hour to an hour and a half of content that people get to watch. The Green Wall wants way more than an hour and a half of content on a daily basis. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give that to them. You know what I mean? Eventually, I am going to be able to have it for them readily available if they want it. Without just setting up a live camera and you showing the headquarters all the time. Which I'm I, sure I mean, you, I would. You, yeah. Thought about it. Yeah. But well, we thought about it at the, at the scuff house. We thought about it at, at, yeah. at the, uh, at the, that's not at the, the optics that's house. not the same. It's not as intimate. That's not as interesting. You know? uh, are you sure? Fucking putting a camera in the living room where people got water dumped on them, where nature was throwing fucking grapes at the wall for <laughs> no. Now I'm talking about big, big massive grapes. <laughs> and me looking at them, I'm like, you're fucking cleaning that up. I am not cleaning that yeah. up. I'm not paying no maid to clean that shit up. Still there. Still those there. grapes, yeah. I feel, <laughs> I feel feel bad for karma. Uh, Miles, give me a second while I say hello to the sponsors really quickly, and we'll be right back. On this sponsor right now, coming back to the Eavesdrop Podcast for the fourteenth time, and I say that figure figuratively is Purple Mattress, and I cannot hype them up enough because so it's Purple Mattress. It's funny. There are all these gimmicks that promise a great night's sleep. I don't care what kind of toppers there are or how heavy the blanket may be. It's lipstick on a pig, okay? And no matter how much it improves the pig, the pig's still a pig. If you think about it, sleeping on a pig wouldn't be as uncomfortable as you might seem. Neither here or there. We're here to talk about Purple Mattress. The new Gel Flex Grid is the thing that I am most in love with, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I use it on my pillow. And if it wasn't for the bed that I have, I would totally have a full-on mattress that would be strictly all com composed of this Gel Flex Grid. It keeps it cool. It keeps it, like, it, it's not like memory foam where you get, like, this stuck feeling. Like, it, it's actual. It moves with you. It grooves with you. It always keeps you cool or warm. Don't flip the pillow if you're if you're comfortable and, and, and happy with the current temperature that you're sleeping on. Uh, the Gel Flex Grid is amazing. It's supportive. Uh, it's supportive for your back, your legs, while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep. I sleep on the side. I got to fix that. Um, but look, getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash hex. That's H3CC. And use code H3CC at checkout for a limited time. The eavesdrop listeners, people that listen to this podcast, can get 10% off of any purchase of $200 or more. It is the most worth it thing you're going to do. Half of your time is spent sleeping anyway, unless you have a superpower where you can only, you're okay with sleeping only four hours a day. I am not that guy. I literally spent 50-50 uh, of my time walking or sleeping. That's, I, have, I have two modes, two switches, awake and sleeping, and they're both equally divided amongst 50-50. That is my superpower. I never miss out on my sleep. So, purple.com slash hex, that's H3CZ, promo code hex, that's H3CZ, terms apply, and if you go to the link in the description down below and use code hex, that's H3CZ, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more.
We also have DoorDash coming back. I, I got to tell you, uh, not only do I use it every single day, but I certainly appreciate the fact that they are uh, that they're sponsoring the podcast. Because I know a lot of, of you people like me uh, live busy lifestyles and don't have the time to one uh, plan dinner, let alone prepare it. By the time that you get home, you just want to sit down and sit on the couch and wait for the food to get to your to your doorstep or have food already made for you. Right? Uh, one of my strategies, as you guys all know, is that before I leave the hex quarters, I already pick what I'm going to eat. So sometimes. I'm able to time it perfectly to where the second that I get home, so is my DoorDash driver. And we give each other the nod like, thank you. You're doing God's work for by, by delivering this food to me. And here we are, right? Because I do have back-to-back -back meetings, errands to run, uh, people to yell at, people to say praises to, the whole nine yards. And sometimes... You know, dinner can get a little bit confusing. You'll find me almost daily asking other people what they are going to have for dinner so I can steal their ideas. But not only that, you can get dinner, but you can also get household essentials and everything on your grocery list delivered to you. Because if you've ever pulled into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store only to realize that you forgot that one key ingredient, then you can call DoorDash. Yes, I have ordered one tomato in the past from DoorDash, from Tom, uh, Tom Thumb. I'm, I'm being serious. If you want me to prove it, I can. I'll screenshot it and show you, right? But it's, it's time to get back out there. If you're not quite ready for a full-blown adventure to the grocery store, there's still ways to explore the world from the comfort of your home. With DoorDash, you don't need to travel far to experience something new. This past year has taught us to savor every single moment together, to spend less time prepping and cooking and more time with the people that you love. With the help of DoorDash, you can certainly accomplish that because you can get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants that you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered to your door uh, with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under one hour uh, and if you're craving late night ice cream or you forgot the Korean ingredients we were saying with DoorDash you can get everything in just one application maybe you just need to stock up on your groceries for the week like this can help you get that job done check it off the checklist and you're on to the next one with over 300,000 restaurants uh, 300,000 partners you can support your local go-to's your favorite neighborhood go-to's or you can choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's Get the spicy chicken sandwich with the Cajun fries. You can go to Chipotle, right, and get that bowl, get that burrito, steak, Frito, uh, sofritas, whatever. I'm not a sofritas guy, so I definitely know that a steak, an extra steak, by the way. But you only ask for extra steak after they build it. Well, here you can ask for all of that, the Cheesecake Factory, you name it. They have it, and it will be left safely outside of your door if that's what you choose to, if you choose to go with the contactless delivery Um Drop off. And right now, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash application and enter code eavesdrop. That's E A V E S D R O P. That's 25% off your first $10 value order and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash application in the App Store and enter code E A V E S D R O P. The link will be, oh, actually, never mind. Yeah, the link to the app will be in the description down below. And again, it's 25% off code eavesdrop at the at the download screen we'll see you guys there uh enjoy it follow my strategies guys like it's the, it's the it's the only way to live this third sponsor is none other than fume i i have personally never smoked a cigarette in my life uh but i know a lot of people that do i know a lot of people that have and the number one thing to getting off the nicotine and the tobacco is the inability to have something that sort of allows you to have your everyday life continue to be what it was, right? Whether it's your smoking tendencies, you know, your routines, etc. Like these are all things that you need to get rid of. So that's why it's so hard to get off of uh, smoking, right? Well, that's why you have to check out Fume. Fume is a natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, and natural way to quit cigarettes. It's a no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine replacement for the hand to mouth habit of smoking. I was just literally talking about that, right? Replace that habit. Fume is made of 100% Canadian maple and uses cores infused with plant oils study to curb cravings. They have flavors like peppermint and to conquer any minty notes to stimulate menthol cigarettes and other flavors like lemonberry bliss and sweeter experience. Uh, and all of the, uh, their flavors are 100% natural, no harmful chemicals, no artificial flavors, and absolutely no nicotine. So what's their story? Who is it? Who are they and where do they come from? Well, Fume was launched in Calgary, Canada in an effort to build a world of positive habits. And it has since helped over 50,000 customers around the world get off of their bad habit. Uh, they're on a mission to help 1 million people quit smoking by 2025. 
if that I mean I could get behind that 100% from start to finish and beyond not only does fume help quitting the process of smoking but they also have supported beyond quitting over a dozen course of relaxation energy and more look quitting is tough but fume can really help they have thousands of of thousands of reviews, of five-star reviews, from smokers who have tried everything else and nothing else has worked until they gave this a try, right? So whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker who struggles with cravings, Fume is the perfect tool for you. It's time to create positive habits and quit naturally with Fume. And we're here to make it easier. Right now, if you head over to breathefume.com, that is B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash H3CC and use, como, and use promo code HACKS, H3CC, you're going to save $10 off your entire order. You're going to save on the cigarettes that you aren't buying. You're going to save on your initial purchase of fume. That's 10% off your entire order. If you head over to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash H3CC and use code H3CC at checkout. The link will be in the description down below for make, you know, to make it easier for you to just click and start to get off of those bad habits. Uh, last but not least, super, super excited. Super excited. I cannot tell you how excited I am to name this new sponsor of the podcast, and it's none other than Coinbase. I have a crypto wallet. Are you crypto curious? I have been. I've been going down the rabbit hole, and I got to tell you, it's one of the most exciting things that I've, 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 I've experienced in the last decade. The same way that I was passionate about YouTube is the same way that I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this new iteration of the internet. Right. And um, look, if you are, as I was saying, crypto curious, if you thought about entering the world of cryptocurrency but felt a little bit overwhelmed, Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell very, very simple. If you've been looking to level up your financial portfolio, it's always good to diversify. Right? They always tell you, diversify or don't put all of your eggs in one basket. So why not think about cryptocurrency? Backed by the world's leading investors, Coinbase keeps your portfolio safe and secure while adding crypto into your mix. Coinbase offers a trusted and easy-to-use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the marketplace and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and mobile applications so that you can trade securely and monitor your crypto crypto all in one place whether you're looking to diversify just looking to get started or searching for a better way to access your crypto uh, markets start today with coinbase millions of people over 100 countries trust coinbase with their digital assets i can open up my phone right now and show you my, my coinbase account or my coinbase uh, wallet but i won't just trust that i have it i use it it is in my thing uh, and for a limited time right now new users Okay, listen, if you are about your paper and if you have been listening, if you want to listen, listen, th this is the time. It is not too late. Yes, there's been a lot of good stuff that has happened. There's a couple of things, a couple of bad things that have happened also. But if you if you feel like you're missing out on a new iteration of opportunity, you are right. Those are your instincts telling you that you are missing out on something. Last year, I was in an investor meeting and they asked me. So they asked me, what are you not in right now? And I said, the one thing that I'm messing up on that I know 100 percent I'm rectifying as soon as possible is crypto crypto. I said it and right now it's not too late, right? Like we have we have some time. Again, it may feel as though it's a little bit too late because you hear all the all the hot lines and all the hot titles and all the videos, but it's still very very early. I'm very bullish on the on the opportunity, so I'm going to continue to operate in it because uh, one is uh, interesting and two like duh like we see it coming like it, it's it's a it's a wave that's going to come crashing the internet and the world is about to change and you're either going to be a part of it and you're going to take advantage of it or you're just going to go along with the flow which is also okay but right now for a limited time new users can get ten dollars in free bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash hex that is coinbase.com slash h3 CZ, and you can sign up at coinbase.com h3cc for ten dollars in free bitcoin this offer is all is for a limited time only so be sure to sign up today that's coinbase.com slash x and i'll put the link in the description down below but go get your free ten dollars in bitcoin please please because the next thing you know it's different that figure is not going to sit there and look like that so please go get your free ten dollars worth of bitcoin by using the link in the description down below or if you just go to coinbase.com slash hex, that's H3CZ for the $10 free of Bitcoin. And if you're already participating, you know what the deal is. The same for you. Uh, let's get back to my man, Miles. Miles. So, Miles, thank you so much uh, for for coming in here. Look, I uh, as, as, as Joe Woe walked in there, mm. right, this is the second time from energy, um, Joe, Joe Woe walked in here. 
I, I saw him with the camera, and I'm like, dude, I, I see you that camera, and you're not using it. Like, don't, don't, you're, you're, you're content. Like, there's yeah. never a wrong time to pick up the camera. You know what I mean? Luckily, he walked in during the during our commercial break. Um, Magical. So it was uh, perfect timing. But you know what it is. Um, Miles, let's talk a little bit more about uh, your the, the, your family being in the TV business. Explain that. It is the it is the family business. Um, it, both my parents are one of six. A lot of pe- lot of kids. Okay, you're one of six. I I know my my parents. Oh, your got, parents. Yeah, they're they're one of six um, siblings. Okay. Um, big family. Almost everyone. Nearly everyone in the family, or my aunts and uncles, in some way, shape, or form, are in TV. One or two outliers there. Cameras, microphones, you name audio. it. I mean, everything from uh, the commissioning editor of BBC Four, one of my Fuck. uncles. Yeah, we've got like BAFTA award winners. We've got um, the most famous by far, um, my uncle Jonathan, Jonathan Ross, who is um, he's basically the, he's he's the equivalent of like a Letterman in the UK. Okay. I mean, he's a he's a big deal. He's got an OBE. He's an he's got an order of the British Empire. Oh shit. Yeah, I don't tell people about that because that's a lot to live up to. Like, yeah. The Queen gave him a medal. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. You know, for his services to, to broadcast and whatever. But yeah, the family really is deep in it. I mean and in in every way, editing, you name it. Like we're we're across it. My dad was a comedy producer for a long time. My mum was a TV presenter before she had me. Okay. So it really is in the blood. So when I went to Australia and became like an IT technician, they were like, what? Yeah. What are you doing? At a TV station? No, just no, in general. Just, yeah. yeah, like it's an insurance Some company. Bank. They were like, yeah. they were like, what? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I've always, it's hard not to want to be in that space, you know, when it is the family industry and yeah, everyone is the way they are. Um, a lot of extroverts, everyone's really loud. Everyone's joking all the time. I didn't know, you know, and again, this is all because of my grandmother. She passed away in, in um, 2019, I believe. And she was like the the glue that held the Ross family together. And she was loud and the full matriarch. of stories. True matriarch, yeah. Yeah. So she was the she was the loudest. She had all the stories. She was keeping everyone going. That kind of trickled all the way down. So like everyone is like everyone is is sort of in that space because of her. She put them in the TV at kids. Kids. Uh, she made them do commercials and things like that. Amazing. Now it is. Uh, you know like the the ross name in tv is like a it's a it's a dynasty for mm-hmm. sure my sister's now a tv producer you really know, like, yeah everyone's awesome man. everyone's doing it so i branched out in the gaming world but i took so much i mean of that you're with still me. you're still in tv I mean, it's just yeah. it's just not traditional tv exactly and that's for me that's what makes this so cool because i'm taking everything from their world about yeah what it is to produce who's, who, who's uh who's got more followers on twitter your uncle or you oh he's in the millions is he's he? like yeah guys his, hold on. his twitter is going to be in the description down below make sure to follow let's let's try to help Drop him a follow I'm yeah. cha- I'll tell you what we're chasing right now. We're chasing oh, a lot. Miles. Yeah, we're chasing 4.9 million. 4.9 million. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my That's what I'm talking about. So, you know, come on, guys. Hit the follow button. Yeah. I've got a cute dog. You know, and I'm always posting weird behind the scenes shit at these Dude. events. But no, he's a he's a he's a he's a lot 4. of fun. Four point nine million p- g- g- Jesus. Yeah, no, I know, I know. But th- this the thing with the thing with the family again is my grandmother she used to always say like hey use the family yeah. use the family to get yeah. jobs use the yeah. family to-. and i never did that i did use some of the family to get girls but that yeah. was it yeah, yeah that yeah. was it i'm clean now i swear yeah. i'm married yeah. happily married, happily married. how many like, years i've uh, been together for 11 years but happily been- married now for three okay yeah, i've yeah, been yeah. happily well i've been happily married for five years yeah. six years but i've yeah. been with my wife for 20 years this year that's 20 amazing. years that's amazing dude yeah once you once you find the one like you know yeah, and you know i got lucky I got lucky. That's what it's all about, man. Dude, but you have to put yourself out there to get lucky. You can't just, it doesn't just happen. Oh, it just, roll it, listen, it just happened to me. You know what I'm saying? I think like, it might just happen to me as well. <laughs> yeah, right? It just, it just happened. Wasn't looking. I, oh. I, was, I was actually in two relationships at the time when I met, when I met Jude for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I was, ve- I was being very faith- faithful and loyal to both of those girls that I was dating at as the time. As you can only do. You can, you, only, I mean? you, you can do that. And then here comes Jude and... Sorry, ladies. <laughs> yes, yes, baby. But that's you know, you know yeah, immediately, true, yeah. yeah, immediately, immediately. I, I was, um, I was uh, sixteen. No, I was seventeen. She was fifteen when I when I met her. When yeah. I first met her. Hi, right, brother. Good luck, Dashi. You're. He's uh, in the zone. Another yeah, dude. Another just locked yeah. in. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, no. TV is the family business. Um, to roll back on that. Yeah. St- taking as much as I can from that industry and all the learnings and all the trappings of, um, you know crazy fame and all that like learning as much as i can from the fam pulling that into the world that i love the gaming world and trying to just marry the two that has been the one sort of standout i've always had because i don't know the most about the game i'm never going to know mm-hmm. more than trance or study or merc about call of duty but can i entertain people on camera can i tell a naughty joke wait chance played chance uh, yeah he played I mean, he didn't compete but he played enough and he but he is like 
Chance is like a savant. Like he knows everything. He learns it. He's one of those guys that he didn't necessarily do it with his hands, but he did it with his brain. One of my favorites. And when he was competing to get on, or he did like a competition. Uh, the, right? cast, the cast off, yeah. Yeah, the cast off. Yeah. I, I remember running into him at a, a World of Beer, I think it may have been. In Colum in when, where, where In Easton? Yeah. I don't know where it was. I don't yeah, know yeah. where the cast off was. I think was. it was the Colum I don't know. The was it? Beer. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah. But, but I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, man, you, you're doing really good up there. He's like, yeah, I don't care. And I was like, yeah, he doesn't. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck you mean you don't care? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, dude, you're really fucking good. You're probably gonna fucking win this shit or 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 be up there. You should care. He's like, yeah, I just you know. I'm like, I'm like, well, we don't want you around. Let's get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, we don't. If you're we, bringing the passion, nah, 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 get There's out. There's people that want this. Get yeah, out. Yeah, but and, and I, I, I'm like, I'm like, are you just saying that because you want to be cool and shit and that? He's like, he's like, ah, no, nah, I just you know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you should you should care a little bit because you got it. You got you he, got it. So he there's definitely an element of that in him still today. Mm -hmm. He's too cool for school. You tell him like, you know, oh, we're gonna go. Everybody's like, yeah, okay, cool. But when we're in it, yeah, he is razor 100%. sharp, man. He's yeah. he pretends like Chance keeps it cool, but no, nah, man, he's locked. Even to like, I saw him yesterday, and I was like, "What's up? How you doing?" He was just like that, locked. And yeah. he's my he's one of my dearest friends. Yeah, but he's like strictly business when yeah. it comes to this shit, and Good. I love that about him. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like having fun and meeting people, I'm, and you know, I want to uh, get a drink. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm glad he's we I'm, I'm glad in. we still have him around because yeah, he's he's definitely. Well, when he said that, I was a little bit disappointed because I'm like, man, we need you. Like, we need somebody yeah. like you that, that's yeah. this good, and you know what I mean. So that's good. Good thing you brought him up. Also, like, not every player can go from playing to the broadcast. Not everyone's mm -hmm. cut that way. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is, is sort mm -hmm. of built for it. So for, for analysts, I'm sure, yeah. For some analysts, of them, yeah, for yeah. sure. I think all of them. I hope so. I mean, we're gonna need, we have fucking nameless up there. You know what I mean? Like I'm just kidding. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no one catches strays like Ant. I love it. Like, nameless and methods. Methods. No one. No meth methods is good. Yeah. yeah. And Ant and I have known each other since Call of Duty too. Yeah. Right. So like, we have our own. Yeah. You know, like he's. You know what I mean? So we 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 came from somewhere. You know yeah, what I mean? So sure. I'm always not gonna give him shit for whatever. Oh, no man, matter we, how fucking big of a hater he is. We, we, we give him so much shit for no reason. We love that. But also he hands it out. He he he, lo he lives for it. He really 100%. does. But that's one thing I think we need more in Call of Duty is, and, and I think now is the time we've had more talent than ever, more broadcast talent where there's challenges. The college league, like the rec league, like there is there are leagues and pop-ups everywhere. There are talent learning the craft more than I've ever seen before, Especially which nowadays, I think is yeah. amazing. Yeah, amazing because we're not going to be around forever. We need a next generation, and the same we need another generation of players. We need another generation of talent. Yeah, we need people that are getting. You know, I don't think so. I think you're going to be like fucking John Madden, super old. Yeah, yeah, just fucking continue. Whitehead. To yeah, Actually, not yet. I'm Inevitably. Still... In yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, how old are you? 30, 33? 33, yeah. My grades didn't start coming in until I was like thirty six. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, you you got the good grades. That's nice. Yeah, I'm dude, down. Like, I'm a fucking pep, pep. What's it called? Salt, salt and pepper. pepper yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm salt down. For, I'm ready for the salt and pepper. My wife is as well. She's like, oh, why don't we just do like a little streak here, like some Doctor Strange shit? I'm like, honey. Hey, whatever it does, it that's does. That's for anniversaries only. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. I think. I think. Um, do you know what's funny when you when you say that thinking about like doing this forever? Mm -hmm. Could I do this forever? Yes, but I'm one of those people that if it's not bringing me joy anymore, mm -hmm. I can't put myself into it. I can't fake it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if I can't, if I'm not, it would be responsible for 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 a person in your position, my position, to not do what we love to do. Yep. Because you know, just, just we've, yeah, I'm getting paid. No, yeah. like I have to love it. Yeah, you know, and that's that passion and again it's that authenticity yeah. if i'm rocking up and just like clocking in the fans are like yeah he's all right but he's not really bringing it yeah i don't feel it and that's yeah. our my job is to make you feel yeah chance yeah. makes you think yeah you know i'm there screaming getting the goosebumps yeah but yeah, that yeah. Is, if, if i'm not bringing that 100 go percent man else. that's that's why that's why um maven and Merck did so well because they cared and they pushed it that's why you and chance do so well that's it's why passion yeah like the, the majority i mean i don't i don't think that there's been a caster that i've had a problem with from and i'm not saying problem like personal but, yeah. but like a, a a he's not bringing it he's faking it yeah, yeah. I, I have i haven't had that uh which is yeah. good and there are a lot and a lot have come and a lot have gone right like how, uh, I, I think i think that your your ceiling is what you want it to be i love that miles uh because you know you have fucking uncle 4.9 out there that he can plug you because you're good enough to be on tv period i guess it's obvious it's a it feels like a lateral move it feels yeah. like it's, it's another it's another place i'd love to go yeah i mean think about it's it right? hard. Like, you i can don't want to follow be, yeah. i want to follow i want to do my own thing but yeah i, I don't think following it. is that bad though especially when it when it comes to family stuff like i i think that you that's know we put it yeah it, look if, if it's a family tradition like if it's a family tradition <laughs> that's important man it's, you know what i mean yeah of, of, of sorts uh personally i love that 
I never saw it that way, man. I never thought of it in that regard. You changed my life today, Hector. No, well, I mean, Grandma had it locked in. She like, she's a like, used the family. Yeah, she did. And that's not a bad. Like, there's 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 something to be said about entertainers, right? And that's what we are at the end of the day, right? Yep. Of class clowns. If you're in, like you are literally entertaining, you can't help it. yeah, you're you're entertaining your classroom. Like that's. That's a that's something you can make a vocation out of. A yep. lot of people have, especially in this day and age. Not everyone gets to do that, dude. It's it's funny you say that because I think it is truly built into you. It's a genetic mm -hmm. thing. Like I'm I'm currently reading Dave Grohl's book, The Storytelling, and he goes about he's talking about his daughter. And one day she came to him. You know, he's the drummer of Nirvana. He's the frontman of the Foo Fighters. He's my hero. Mm. Yeah, a hundred percent. No offense, you're also a hero of mine, Hector. But it's different. <laughs> he he. But he talks about like when his kid first came to him, she's like, Dad, I want to learn to play the drums. And he was like, oh my God, yes. this is it. This it's is literally, it. It. and she, straight away, she gets it, straight yeah. away. And he's like, all right, it's in the blood. Oh, daughter. It's so real, his daughter, yeah. 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 And I, I think all of his daughters now are in music, but like, yeah. it's because it is in the blood. It's yeah. what you grow up around. It's what you, you know, fall yeah. in love with. I'm trying to think now, like based on what my wife and I are like, what are our kids going to do? What mm -hmm. are they going to be like? Yeah. What are their interests going to be? What are their yeah. like, what's going to yeah. get them going? It blows my mind. I just wait. Just wait. I, ju I, ju I personally just wait. Yeah. Like, I w w anytime Liv wants to, you know, she she draws, she plays, you know, she does like all her things. But when she's like drawing, I'm like, I'm just waiting to be tapped in, Dad. Like, how do you do this? How do you, what's the? Easy I'm just fucking waiting because I don't want to be like, yo, do this shit. Yeah. Nah, yeah, that's off. No, yeah. no, 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 let me try these colors instead. No, yeah. yeah. I, I once took her shopping uh, to uh, PCHLA. It's this this uh, this uh, uh, streetwear company down down the street. Fucking miles and miles and miles. The Texas Ross down the street. Huge. Yeah, and huge. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, like, what, what, what do you like? And then she picked the, these ugly ass Yeezys, like fucking ugly Yeezys. <laughs> and I brought them to the counter, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is what she wants. And they're like, all right, cool. And I'm like, for the fucking record, I would have never fucking picked these. <laughs> but at the same have time, yeah. But at the same time, I'm never gonna tell her. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna guide, but if she wants to be her, yeah, she can. If she likes those shoes, she fucking likes those shoes. I'm that, just happy. I'm just happy that she asked me to take her to buy some sneakers. You know, that's a good call, dude. It's funny you said that. Like parents, when they push shit on kids, it sometimes backfires. Mm -hmm. My dad forced soccer on me, football. I was like, all right, I get it, but I'm not that interested. Other sports didn't work out. I did catch him playing Street Fighter with my uncles when I was a kid, though. Mm -hmm. And did I watch that shit for hours and hours and hours and go, mm, okay, I'm yeah. going to whoop your ass one day. Yeah. And I did. You know, but like that, you, if you can't choose what your kids like. And that's the same with us. Like, we can't choose what we love. But once you find it, and I tell people this every day, once you find the thing you love, never let go of that shit. Mm -mm. No matter what it is, if it's a hobby, yeah. whatever. Yeah. If you can make it your profession, go yeah. for it. But you can never let that shit go. I ask her, I'm like, what do you want to be when you grow up? She's like, she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, a lawyer for us? Awesome. Like, <laughs> Thank you. She's like, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm like, whoa, let's not. You're 12. We don't, we, you know. <laughs> but, you know, we, we let's, let's talk about it at yeah, least. Think about it. Um, and it's crazy, right? Like, we want the best for them, but I don't want to be a lawyer personally. You it's know hard I mean? work. It's yeah. really hard work. Yeah, and, and, and I'm like, I, 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 stressful job. We were talking. We were in the kitchen yesterday, and I'm like, I'm like, man, I wonder, I wonder who, I wonder if she got like your work ethic, pointing to my wife, who's the fucking hardest worker ever, Same. or, or if she got, you know, the the lazy. This is the best way to yeah. do things because it's the hard, least path of least resistance, yeah, yeah. easiest thing to do, and then lives like, yeah, probably you, dad. Like, it's like I'm, I'm not lazy, but I'm lazy. I, that's part of the magic though man you find the best way the best way to do something i love that yeah kids are amazing though i'd love kids one day we would love kids working on it but we've still got a lot to do before that. i think look I think still if, if you if you what, what's that job quote if you uh if you find something that you love to do for a living it's not work you know yeah. so you're not day. working for it uh, yeah yeah you're yeah. not working on the kid you know what i mean you, yeah you do something that you love to do because who doesn't love that right uh tell me aside from casting and aside from that like what <clears throat> what's miles into miles loves loves his movies man it comes across in the work um obsessed with japanese cinema uh i used to love martial arts as a kid um, i practiced kendo for like two years this japanese fencing um got the shit beaten out of me shit beaten out of me by you know older dudes and i'm i'm this little samurai boy yeah, like, yeah. having a good time in the countryside getting my ass whooped mm -hmm. love my motorcycles that's one thing i wish i did more here in the u.s that was yeah. like my that was like the greatest thing for me in australia moving to a country where i didn't have any friends i just my it was like my girlfriend at the time my wife now that opened up that whole city to me and gave me this, mm -hmm. a sense of agency that i could go mm. and do anything and see yeah. anything and experience this yeah and like motorcycles are cool as hell it's amazing 
it, it, it's it, ridiculously dangerous and yeah. i had two i had two scrapes which was pretty bad yeah but it was the most amazing amazing experience i'll never forget coming home and i've like i hit an oil slick i was going fast and i hit the deck and i skidded and it was cars and everything all good but like my whole ass black and scraped Can't i was wearing the gear i was wearing the gear leather yeah. jacket you name it i'm all good i come home bikes the handlebars are bent i get home i'm like hey babe she's like how you doing i'm like yeah i'm all good hobbling like she's like how was the ride was, yeah the ride was cool we had a good time everyone's sweet everyone says hi and i'm like by the way had an accident and a face just dropped uh, but like that technique of everything's cool i'm all good yeah i'm home now by the way yeah that was that that's was my good. that's my preferred method of bad news oh yeah like everything's good no one's bad all good but this is what's fucked up i also checked this bruise out yeah Ooh, yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> um that's cool. Motorcycles. Are, do you uh, do you have any here or no? Nothing here. No. I, had a, I had a Ducati Scrambler back in oh, Sydney. Oh shit! So like bike bikes. A bike like, bike. Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. Ro- a crotch rockets. Yeah, yeah. I would. I wanted. Well, I it's, picture, not, uh, it's not too much of a crotch rocket. It's a bit more hipster, but there it is. Okay. Yeah. That's that's what Bright I. Bright yellow. That's what I pictured. Yeah. I had a I had a red leather jacket on that thing. It looked like a McDonald's ad. Yeah. But honestly, the most exhilarating wonderful hobby to have yeah but have you ever seen my super 73 no, you know what i mean but it's i'm a, down it's right behind i mean it. there's something about cars man there's something yeah. about bikes and cars and that smell and I yeah my can't. my uh my neighbor at the gu- at the at, at the garage uh mahal has uh who's the he he collects uh motor uh motocross bicycles oh, like uh, what, what are they called Mo- the dirt bikes yeah, dirt, yeah, yeah, dirt bikes. yeah dirt bikes yeah matt loves the dirt bikes yeah yeah his his oh. uh his brother uh, semi-professional pro, yeah. Semi-pro, yeah. I mean, fucking flying. Is, yeah, 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 yeah. That shit is amazing. To watch, yeah, man. I mean, there's anytime you get to see somebody do something at the peak of their ability, absolutely, is intoxicating, man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I live in LA now, and I love just going down to the Venice skate park, like mm-hmm. on the beach, just watching people for hours. Kids, yeah. old people, yeah, people it. watching. Yeah, love so, that. So, so motorcycles and people watching is your thing. Uh, people watching, yeah. I mean, look, I'm a, I am an observer. I'm a commentator. I love to see. Fr- That's a weird thing about like talking about me on the show because my job is to talk about everyone else. Yeah, you know, in great detail. Yeah. So it's weird talking about that, but yeah, man, motorcycles. What else? It's it's, it's movies, motorcycles. Is are you, nerd culture? Is he the first caster that I've had? I mean, not Jack included. Maybe, maybe. no, maybe no. We had a bunch. Yeah, of never mind, yeah. Never mind. yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool. Like, um. Uh, anything else like that, that Mass, you're I mean, passionate I, I, about? It's, it's, I love comedy still. I can't shake yeah, you, that. Yeah, you did a stand-up, a stand-up stand-up? I did up, some right? stand-up in Australia. I'm nothing it, nothing really of significance, but it taught me a lot of skills, which yeah. was valuable. The thing that really got me going, um, the greatest sort of tool I added to my arsenal, which I tell other people to go for, and it's not as easy now because of COVID and all that shit, but um, improv comedy, mm. especially in Chicago, especially in New York, LA, places like this, Improv taught me so much about just being a better person in general, mm-hmm, being mm-hmm. able to listen, you know, truly being present. But it gave me the it gave me the greatest you know lesson there, which was it's okay to fail, you yeah. know, in front of a on a stage in front of people who don't know you, and yeah. demanding your attention, make me laugh right now, boy. Yeah. And I'm just there like I'm trying, I'm trying. And when it works, you were doing it works. that. Maybe not just like okay, because I was gonna say I would not. I would have been be like, get, get the, the fuck, fuck off the stage. Yeah, yeah. But that, where's got- Ricky Gervais at? God damn it, bring him on. <laughs> You opened for Ricky Gervais? Wow. Twice. Miles. Twice. No. He, no, but that's that was the thing that was like the ultimate. Because when you cast, you're making the shit up on the, as you go, essentially. Yeah. You're, you've got this like amazing, you know, the game itself is presenting you with all this information. But when you've got downtime, you've got to fill. And everyone's just like, what do I do? Yeah. I'm like, give me a blackboard and a pack of cards. I'll give you two hours. Mm. You know, we had a, we had a, we've had a couple of moments like that where it's like, they're gonna just throw to a break. I'm like, don't throw to a break. I yeah. got this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't worry. I've been training for this my whole life. Good. But that's the sort of thing, man. That like any that's the greatest advice to give to casters. Or like, how do I get better at commentary? And I'm like, for me, it was not commentary. It was anything but and pull shit from every other field you can think of and try to apply it to yours. Yeah. I'm I'm the I'm the same way. I I have I've always loved comedy. So I've, I've always loved entertaining. Yeah. I consider myself a funny guy. You Handsome. Funny guy. Uh, modest, These you know, true. all of the above. Uh, but I, I suffer from having too many passions. Also, right? I love fishing. There it is. I love yep. graffiti. There, oh, there it, it is. is. I love uh, gaming, Call of Duty. I mean, you, you, Minecraft. Like, I, I yep. have too many passions that I got to the point to where I'm like, well, if I want to continue to do these passions and take away from me working, mm. I have to, you know, make a business out of these things or figure out a way to make a business out of these things. And oh, I'm in trouble otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, that's time and it's energy and everything. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. But now that more you're saying it, everything I'm passionate about in life, I pull into the work. 
and I can't help but do that. I just mm -hmm. can't help it. I mean, I play guitar. I think about you know, yeah. See, there you go. Like the, the, you can't help it. And yeah, I'm thinking the about like, the way a band is put together. I'm like, cool. I'm the front man and the lead. Yeah. Chance is the rhythm and, and he's on the he's on the drums and the bass. And it's funny because yeah. he's a drummer as well. Yeah. You know, so we have that like little makeup there which works. Yeah. You know? Yeah, look, vlogging and, and content creation on YouTube, like that's a big passion of mine, right? Like, but it's 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 also become sort of like my work in my job in a sense that I don't, I actually don't see it as work, man. It's not work, is it? No, because I've Even, had I've had jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, this is something you, I've heard you talk about plenty. It's like more when, just shit, yeah, yeah. When you're in an office, when you're doing that shit, yeah. I mean, that is a job. You're working hard for someone else. You're working hard to, you know. You're making good money or whatever but like yeah. it's hard work this at times is incredibly difficult work because there are no rules there's no right way of doing something you know when we commentate when yeah. you know we log in you just get out there you're trying to make it work yeah you yeah, learn yeah. You, you you craft it you hone it you change it yeah there's no ladder yeah if you do this you're gonna go up one nah so you, you you've been uh you've seen the hex quarters obviously on videos before yeah. and, and experience it in person you said that you're like you know what it feels like i've been here already yeah i mean i watched many i watched formal you know i'm i'm in i watched the obviously the boys playing all the time here this i feel like i've been in this place yeah a lot and i think that adds to what we we're talking about about like being a fan mm -hmm. you feel like this human connection to these people and i'm not sitting there like talking to the stream like yeah oh you maniac you know yeah, but like yeah. that that le that's one thing the inter internet does is like we're in each other's homes mm -hmm. and it's sometimes it's a bit weird where i'm like i'm lying in bed but i'm also like i'm in my bed in my bedroom in this like intimate space mm -hmm. formal's playing ranked you mm -hmm. know and i'm watching him do that or yeah. Seth's playing warzone and i'm like there is a weird like i can see why people get obsessed because if you're in that space like indeed like i don't know i don't know man, I'm get, is this, am i getting weird I'll, no I'll, it's look, weird though sometimes no, <laughs> i don't th i don't think so i think uh, the more and more that this thing evolves into what it needs to evolve to like we're, yeah. we're gonna see a lot of those those situations like, like some people just turn on tim the tap man stream so they can have it in the background because they watch a couple of videos and he sounds funny and he sounds funny so yeah. they they, they want to be you know cleaning the house or doing shorts and all of a sudden you're like oh shit oh shit, oh, shit. sit there take a little, quick little break yeah. it happens oh, but it's always running again. it's always yeah. running so i think that it, it is going to continue to be that times mm. a million over and over again for and sure it's what just i'm trying to say is i'm in love with both mm -hmm. matt and seth yeah t2p for life yeah hell yeah uh so experiencing the hex quarter is like yeah, what's, what's it's been cool i mean it's like everywhere you look every single corner of this room has got something cool in it like all the gaming memorabilia like the trophies and everything awards the bats i mean i mean i don't even know what's in the halo box up there but it is like it feels like this place is changing a lot Oh yeah. Every other day. I mean, oh, there's yeah. boxes of shit over. I don't know what's yeah. going on, but like this feels like the energy in this place feels good. It yeah. feels like the first time I came down to um, the MLG Studios in Columbus, mm. and I was like, it was a dream to work for MLG. A fucking dream. Like one of the greatest privileges of my professional life was working for the company that I admired as a kid and as a player. And now being here as well, and I'm like, this is so integral to the way esports and the way this gaming culture works. Like you guys are killing it here. But this place, it's got that same vibe. Yeah. It's got that same excitement, that same energy, even though there's not that many people in it right now. Right now. And that, you know, I can only imagine when this place is popping. Look, it, it, it was it was a moment of if you build it, they will come, right? And and back in the infinite days, they they had my Call of Duty team in a in a in an office room. Like one window office room, everybody was yeah. fucking cramped. I'm like, I'm not gonna fuck it. So, you know, rented this place out for my for myself and put stations in there and, and 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 everybody came they wanted they want to be here right like they have they have setups at home but they like to, they appreciate the fact that they can they can come here work and then go home and disconnect a lot of people don't have the opportunity to to wake up and not see their work and set up like right next to their bed that's the greatest differentiator for people who take this seriously i think when we when covid first hit we lived on the road with the league right me and my wife two suitcases two backpacks that was it we went from hotel to hotel venue to venue mm -hmm. when covid hit they put us into uh an apartment like the the league were like all right this is gonna be over soon we're all gonna be fine you're going downtown la i'm in a one bedroom like furnished apartment super nice mm -hmm. but i am streaming the matches like i'm casting the matches from the end of my bed the other room she set up she's doing her work in the front room that was it mm -hmm. so i would get out of bed bathroom brush teeth hair or whatever breakfast come to work then I'll just go straight to bed. Mm -hmm. That mess with me, you know. That just just not having that yeah. that's, that separation, not having that, drove yeah. me insane. Yeah, yeah. So I a, mean, a, lot, a lot of you people guys have got that here. Yeah. Well, look, people don't realize that that's, that that helps and that that's what yeah. they need. So. You need to compartmentalize that because yeah. it does drive you crazy after a while. If that becomes your life, if that goes wrong, yeah. And this is something that I, a lot. Of, I was talking to a kid last night on Instagram about this. 
you know, if something in your life goes wrong and gaming is everything in your life, then it feels like your whole world is done. It's done. Like you, do, you feel like you're helpless. If you create those little columns, those buckets, and just like this is the, this part of my life, this is this part, of my, these are these relationships, it helps them immensely. Yeah, immensely when anything goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we can sit here and talk for hours on things that, cool. that, that do that. So, uh, any closing comments? Anything that you want to say? Thank, thank you, you for having me on. It's been cool, dude. It's been cool. I mean, it's just awesome to be in here. You know, the vibe is unreal and. I'm looking, looking forward to this weekend. Oh, like uh, this, is the, this could be the best Call of Duty event well, ever. Don't sure, don't sure, Cody. What, what's, what's your number one, two, and three teams? No shit. Number one, phase are good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. But shit happens. Good uh, happens. Your boys looking real good. They turn everything around. I think I might now the the sort of that next spot. That's where things get ugly. But I think you guys have got a good run. I think you got an exciting thieves up first. Yeah, yeah, we got that match. I can't wait. Yeah, wait. Do we have thieves? No, we have surge first. Surge first. Sorry, surge yeah, first. Yeah, which Toronto, is a Toronto fucking thieves. super team. So, but I mean, look, they super team, but they they're still young. They've got a lot to learn. Every, they might not be a super team now. Yeah, but they might be. Oh, no, they're they're threat. Everybody's a threat. <laughs> yeah, that's everyone's what, that's, a that's fucking threat. Unanimous uh, senses says that everybody's a threat, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. easy to see, right? Like it's it it it, it shrunk tremendously the competition so That's uh, guys all of his information is going to be in the description down below make sure you follow check him out obviously uh, become a fan watch the tournament this weekend we have some fire stuff we, we, we got this one of you is going to be getting this when is this going live Matt Okay, so Damn. look, if if you guys are watching, right, like the, this is happening this week, and if you guys haven't bought your tickets, uh, you, there might not be any tickets left, so check out on that, but it is what it is. If we don't see you guys this time, we'll see you guys next time. Miles, thanks so much for tuning in, or for stopping by. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.